Dun, 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 <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> the Washington Commanders. There it is. And, and and look, Will, everybody and their mom that dons that burgundy and that gold has been pointing towards one thing. And I think we need to address it. They all, everybody, I mean, everybody and their mom has either said Ron Rivera or Jack Del Rio needs to go. And in some cases, shoot, I want to say 50% of those cases, they say both of those guys need to go. Where, what are you feeling right now, man? Yeah, I mean, I understand the frustration. I'm pretty frustrated too with Ron, the fact that you got, you know, you're no longer having to deal with all that that junk from, from Dan Snyder and everything. And so I really thought he was going to focus on football. And and, and like be watching with this, the game plans, the schemes for everyone, kind of be on, on top of everything. I really thought he recognized that he said this year, we need to be, get off to a faster start. We come off to slow starts. Well, here we are once again at two and three playing you know, at dog leap and, and having to, um, you know, having to regroup again. And we have to rally again in the middle of the season, the way everything has happened to him so far. So it's frustrating. But I also say this. Who are we going to turn to right now? There it is. Yep. If if you fire Ron, you're going to promote Jack Del Rio, who's got head coaching experience. He's the likely person that you could you could promote. No, wait. Everyone wants him out of town. So what are you going to mm-hmm. do? You're going to promote Eric Bieniemy, who's in his first five games as an as a full offensive coordinator. Now you're going to make him take over head coach responsibilities, media responsibilities, game yep. planning. He's working on this part right here to prove to everyone that he can be a head coach. Like that's not good for him either. Plus how often do interim coaches get named head coaches afterwards? Mm -hmm. I think the Vikings did it with Leslie Frazier a couple years ago, Mm -hmm. but most often you're a placeholder. And for everyone that wants EB to get a chance of being a head coach, just promoting him mid season, it's probably not going to be, the way to do it. So that's the biggest thing right now when it comes to both Ron and Jack is who's going to replace him on staff yeah. if you do that. Right. And and we, I mean, look, you alluded to it earlier. I think we have to, to say, I've told people about it. Yes, we start poor every single year. One and two, two and six, or, you know, one and one and four, two and six, these type of, of, of standings. But somehow, some way around week six, week seven, he finds a way with a random quarterback, with a, a, a you know, a match match work, you know, offensive line, you know, just randomness, and we get it done. He seems to string those victories together. Same with Jack Del Rio. We, you sent me that that tweet where it said, in his last three years, in those first four games, defense averages thirty points. Mm-hmm. Now, towards weeks five through seventeen, it you know, it gets down to you know maybe twenty or less. But still, I mean, you can't start that way and and expect people to believe in you. Right. But at the same time, they do get it done eventually. Right. But like Janae asked me on Monday, how long are we going to be okay with starting so slowly and then eventually kicking it into gear midway through the season? Oh, 100%. And you know – that's exactly what the, this ownership group is doing. You know, yep. they're sitting back, they're watching, they're seeing this. And Ron, this is where it kind of surprises me because Ron knows he's he's on the the chopping block here this season. Yep. This is a yep. prove it. You got new owners, and you don't see the urgency coming from him right now. And that that's what seems kind of surprising. Or the the things he says publicly just doesn't seem to match up where he's like, mm-hmm. we got to do your job. Like just before we came on the show in front of everyone, it says, do your job on the, lo- yeah. before you walk in the locker room. Like I get it. What he's trying to say is we've watched the film. And if you do this and you do this the way you're supposed to, the play, the big play that we gave up, isn't going to happen, mm-hmm. but that's not taking ownership on yourself as coaches. No. no, that's putting all the blame on the players. And that I cannot see how that's going to help turn your season around. If you're just yeah. basically saying y'all need to get this together because it's well, not our fault. Well, yeah. And it lends to something that I uh, shout out to our guy, Ab, that used to be, that comes on here every here and now. One of the things he said is they kind of have this air that we know what we're doing. The people that we brought in house are going to figure it out. And if they don't figure it out, it's on them. 
where it's kind of like we see these gaping holes. We see that certain players can't play well here, there. You know, you can't just mix and match and hope it works. And and I think it, you shoot. I, I you know we're going to talk about this in a little bit. The roster construction, uh, the recent drafts, the the different positions we have not addressed. That falls on Ron. So if you're you're one time you're on here saying, oh man, these guys aren't doing it. Do your job. Maybe these guys aren't. Some of these guys aren't it. Maybe some of these guys aren't the fit, but you thought they were. So maybe they aren't the ones that need to be doing the job. Maybe you need to be doing your job, Ron. Maybe you need to get this thing together. Dude, you, you couldn't have said it better. I mean, let's think about this. Ron coming in. He When he took over the, 20, the Redskins in 2019, he took over a team that had Terry McCorn, Jonathan mm-hmm. Allen, Jerron sure. Payne, Montez Sweat, Brandon Sheriff, Trent Williams as your as your best players. In 2023, the best players on, on the commanders, Terry McLaurin, yep. Montez Sweat, Jonathan Allen, Deron Payne, Chase Young, which came because the Redskins had a, had a bad 2019 team. And so yep. you got it, you were gifted the second round pick. The only two impact players Ron has brought in in his four years are Jahan Dotson and Cam Curl. Those are like the only you could really kind of say, hey, these guys are if they were to be cut, they would be picked up pretty quickly yeah. by somebody else. That's problematic in your yeah. roster building. Johnny mentioned something about you need to take a look at your GM. Absolutely. And Ron is in charge of that. You know, it's a coach centric approach where they, they kind of actually feed up to him. But for you to be sitting here in year four and you can add you've added two good players in and you've had four drafts to do this. Or three, right. like that's a that's a major problem that that we got going on here. That you have not built this roster up up good enough to be competing. That in year four, you shouldn't be in a re- rebuilding process. You should have built no. this up much much better than you did. No, and I mean it's not even just uh, the draft picks, but then the free agency. We go after Robert Ryan Fitzpatrick two years ago, and he plays a quarter. We go after uh, Carson Wentz last year, and he plays, what, the first four games and then gets hurt in the Bears game? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? He didn't look great. Uh, uh, with the exception of one bl- great block on Roquan Smith, <laughs> that was that was it for how good he looked, and he didn't get his chance back until late in the uh, San Francisco game, uh, and then against Cleveland. But, I mean – and with the, some of the players that you guys are getting, not going after some of these free agents that maybe you got to spend some money on, but maybe they can help write the ship in house. It just gives you that feeling like Ron, man, like something you're doing ain't working. And maybe it is that, that he is GM and head coach. Maybe you just need to cut that GM, give that to somebody else. And you focus on the X's and the O's. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Because of it, like Janae said, see, I, I, every year I'm like, man, are these guys, they would play, run through a wall for this guy. They would do anything for him. Yeah, but I, I, I'm not going to run through a wall for somebody if at the end of the day we're not winning. And, and I'm looking and I'm starting to look at things and I'm like, I don't know if he's putting this together right, man. It gets to the point where it's not a bad thing to question, you know, Ron and, and, and the coaching staff. Uh, and now that you have the stats that back it up, it's like, hmm, we do need to think. But I think to your point that you said earlier, We can ask these questions, but unless you have a concrete plan to bring the next regime in, Mm -hmm. I I think you just got to pump your brakes. Because like my like my thing says, we're two and three. We're still just two and three, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, absolutely. And and because of the track record of the middle of the season being their most successful period, they like to get us all pumped up around Christmas time that we got ourselves a good team and then they're going to fall flat on their face. But yeah. that's what they do. And so we just got to hope that they, you know, they were embarrassed on, on Thursday night football. They got a chance to, to watch the film, too, and they have corrected things that they recognize it's time to turn this around and, and whatever they were trying to do is going to get fixed. No, and um, I'm going. I'm going to go ahead and say this right now, on behalf of the fans, Ron and Jack Del Rio, y'all had better fix things because if you thought these fans were rowdy before we had new owners, we had Dan Snyder. Now that we have new owners and we have a little bit of hope, you might get a little anarchy on your hands because the last two home games were sellouts. Will yes, they were sellouts, and that's the product that we put on the field. I can't stand behind that, man. Mm-hmm. I can't. Mm-hmm.
time to take command.